Now I'm removing to the other side of the engine. I'm going to start by removing this air box. I just need to undo this plug and the wiring slides up out of there. It's just a clamp down here onto the throttle body. With that clamp off, you can pull this off the throttle body. Now you can pull the air box out. There's a pipe that sits in here. We'll just pop that out. It sits on these uh, rubber clips that fit down into this groove. Um, there's one at the front and there's also one at the back. The next thing is I want to remove this engine mount and bracket assembly here. But before I remove this, I'm going to need something underneath just to help support the engine. Um, it could sit on the other three engine mounts, but I like to support it because I don't want to strain those other engine mounts. Now, it's really difficult for me to show you this on camera, but this is the back of the sump, um, the drive shaft and the exhaust coming off. Um, if you reach up, in this space here, there's a bolt that sits at the bottom of the intake manifold and it secures to a bracket on the block. Um, you're going to need to undo that bolt. There's also a clip with some wiring. Um, we want to remove that as well. I'm going to take the intake manifold off. Some people do leave them on, but I find it much easier just to get it out of the way. Um, so this bolt does need to come off. It's often a torque socket, but in this case it's a 10 mil bolt. Um, and I can show you this detail a little bit more once the intake manifold comes off and you can see what I'm talking about. Now I just want to take a little bit of weight off that engine mount. So I'm just going to jack up the engine. I've put a block between my jack and the sump. Now I don't want to lift this a lot, but you can see it's lifting the car a little bit. Um, but I just want to take the weight off that engine mount. So we don't need to lift it up a whole lot, but just support the engine like that. With the engine supported, I can now take out these bolts and the bolts for the engine mount. They're a 15 mil bolt. You can see when I did that last one that that engine just dropped down a little bit, that's okay. And you can pull the engine mount up and out of the engine bay. The next thing I'm going to remove is this bracket here that bolts to the engine. It's 15 mil bolt in here. There's another one in under here that you can't see. And there's one in on the front. So we've got a total of three of them. Now the third one, which is in here, um, I can't get my socket and wrench in because it's hitting this bracket here. What I can do now the engine mount is removed is I can jack the engine up a little bit more just to give myself enough room. Don't do it too much because you're going to strain those other engine mounts. So just jacking it up a little bit more. Hopefully that gives me enough room to get my socket in there. That last bolt can come out. And then this bracket can slide up and out of the way. The three bolts for this are all the same length, but they've got different points at where they start from, so that's why they look different there. But they are actually all the same length. Now 
Now I want to remove this serpentine belt. Um, I do have another one here. This is a tensioner that's holding the tension on that belt at the moment. And it's got this fitting here, which um, fits nicely with a socket. Now you're not going to be able to see that on there, but once we've got that socket on there, we can take the tension off. So the socket's now on there. I can just press against the tensioner, take the tension off the belt, and just pop it off one of the pulleys and take that away. Next I want to remove this cover here. It's a 10 mil bolt. That is our first glimpse at our timing belt and the cam pulleys. This next section of plastic just pulls away. Now the next part, which is this pulley and things down here, we're gonna do from in under the tire arch. Now I carefully lowered the engine down on the jack um, and I'm okay with that right now because I just needed the jack just to um, lift up this wheel a little bit so I can take this wheel off and take this ramp away. Now we can get this wheel off. Now I've got the car supported by a jack stand and I'm going to start working in this wheel arch space. This one's missing a few of the clips and some of the plastics but we've got a clip up here we want to remove. Now with this plastic just peeled back we can see the crank pulley here. This has a 17mm bolt, some of these have a Torx headed bolt in here. Um, if you're not using an impact, this is gonna be fairly challenging and difficult. With that bolt removed, you can now give this a wiggle and your bottom pulley will come off. There are two bolts that secure this bottom um, plastic housing in place. After those two little bolts are removed there, we need to remove the tensioner. To remove the tensioner, there's a center bolt here. However, we do need to remove the pulley, otherwise there's not enough room to get the tensioner out. Now be aware that the center bolt for this tensioner is a reverse thread. So it goes the opposite way to what you think. With that removed, we can now remove the center bolt. With the centre bolt out, you can now wiggle this tensioner out of the way. Now I'm not fully removing it, but I've wiggled it enough out of the way that we're going to be able to get to the bolts behind it and remove this plastic cover. With that tensioner now out of the way, you can now get to these two bolts. There's one here and one here.
with the two bolts removed from the top, then this plastic cover can come out of the way.